with a pack upon my back and a good wide grin I'm on my way to California with a buddy tried and true we will camp upon the blue Pacific shores of California jamboree jamboree jambo jamboree 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 I'm not sure it was quite as beautiful a day as it is today but it was spectacular I I know nevertheless I was very happy just to get out of the farmland of Illinois and my expectation was I'm wide open to anything because I wanted something different. And uh, I'd never been into the Pacific Ocean, never been west before, and I thought this would be a fantastic opportunity that was given to me, and I took it. I was 13 years old, just, just had turned 13, and excited about coming down to be with 50,000 Boy Scouts. It's a great time. Our den mother took a group of our, our, the boys in our den uh, for a long drive in her, her 1952 Dodge or Plymouth station wagon and we drove all the way from the Santa Monica area all the way down to Newport Beach which at that time took several hours because there was no freeways. One of the greatest experiences I had was meeting some of the boys from foreign countries and trading items with them. Uh, they brought all kinds of souvenirs from home and then we had souvenirs too and uh, clasps uh, for neckerchiefs and so on. And uh, again, it was a, uh, a real fulfilling experience and something I've never forgotten. I'm probably meeting people from other countries, uh, people generally from English speaking countries like New Zealand and Australia, and certainly Canada, obviously. And um, even though I lived in New York, it was a fairly cosmopolitan area, but I lived in a very small town. So our life was no different than maybe a small town in the Middle West or any small town. So coming out here and having, to meet, having the opportunity to meet people who are from not only from other places, but from places a long ways away. And that was, a, that was probably my best experience. Well, of course, meeting, meeting uh, young men from all over the United States is interesting because some of the regional sections had accents like the boys from the South had, had such strong southern accents, it was tough to understand them. And then trying to, to uh, communicate with uh, some Boy Scout from Japan or, or some other place was difficult. But uh, you know, 14 year olds and 15 year olds have a way of communicating. And uh, it was a, uh, quite a worldly experience, if, if you ask me. Oh, I can remember. Uh... <laughs> Going from our end of the, of the Jamboree, clear down to the, the bay almost, it was a long walk. When I got there, uh, it was kind of warm and uh, there was a, 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 a lot of scouts around doing different things. As I, We saw different activities going on. We saw boys coming and going to different activities. Uh, we saw where they were eating their chow. We saw the main uh, place where all the flags were. Yeah, the, down in the center that had flags from all the different uh, places that were represented at that, that jamboree. Our troop was located in West Los Angeles, close to Hollywood, and as a consequence, we thought it would be a good idea to have some unique sort of scarf to bring to the jamboree, and I'm holding that in my hand. This scarf has the signature of a lot of Hollywood stars on it, so that it became a very very valuable trading component to have here at the at the Jamboree. I think the biggest surprise was how many boys were. I, I just could not fathom that many boys all in one place. And all of the transportation, buses, and, and different, different uh, things that were going on was just incredible to see that many young men all engaged in scouting. There is no end to the activities that are prepared by the staff, whether it be archery, rifle range, uh, skeet, you know, fly casting, you name it, all kind of entertainment. But there, for some reason, we discover our own entertainment and these big hills were uh, tall grass that was dried. And if you took a cardboard box that your provisions came in and flattened it and kind of curled up the front, you could slide down those hills and it it entertained us greatly, uh, spending a lot of time on those hills, although we did partake of the other things, but I do recall that. 
I, I really enjoyed the, the afternoon or the evening when they had the shows in the arena. They saw the Thunderbirds come through. Uh, one very interesting thing, I was watching a Western um, pre pre a presentation in a bowl, and I looked over and there was a gentleman in a scout uniform, and I walked over to him and I said, you look just like Jimmy Stewart. And he said, well, I am Jimmy Stewart. Well, I forgot the Western thing, and we sat and talked for almost two hours. He was intrigued by my patrol flag. We had a, our patrol was called the Bossy Patrol. We were from Wisconsin, so we had a pink udder that hung from our flag and went like this, and he was intrigued by that. The interesting thing was, 11 years later, when I was in the Air Force, a General Jimmy Stewart stepped into my step van as he was getting ready to fly B-52 bombers, because he was upgrading himself to flying. And I said, um, excuse me, General, I hope I'm not uh, uh, disturbing you, but I had a significant conversation with you 11 years ago. He says, well, tell me where you're from. And I said, Madison, Wisconsin. I remember your patrol flag. It was the utter. So. <laughs> sure, I remember, I remember, I believe Roy Rogers was here, and, and uh, he, maybe Hopalong Cassidy and President Nixon was here, or no, he was Vice President Nixon at the time gave an address and then there was a, a part of the ceremony, the final part where everybody lit a candle and the, all you could see is candlelight from, uh, from all over the area where we were seated. And some of the things I really remember, we had a trading tent where we could meet other scouts and trade merit badges and things like that and all types of souvenirs. I remember meeting James Stewart and some of the other actors who, super, who put on the event, uh, walking around. I met Richard Nixon, who was the vice president at the time. Well, Bob Hope, of course. He was one of the, he was one of the characters, of course, we, we, we would know. And there would be other people that would be here from time to time. Uh, the athletes would come through also. And then one day they, um, we just, they took us down to the ocean and took us swimming, bust us down right down here in Newport Beach. And uh, the water was cold, but it was great because it was so hot up here. Coming from Pennsylvania, suddenly you're in the Wild West, or you know, where movies are made and where cowboys are, and and we heard of the uh, the Wild West show. Uh, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans were here, Lash Larue, and throughout the jamboree at the uh, sites of uh, scouts from the West, there may be a. Uh, a rawhide bullwhip in the hand of a scout who was cracking it with a tremendous rifle shot of noise and it really excited us and we all wanted a bullwhip to which I've had one all my life. <laughs> Never got over the thrill, I guess. Being in scouts and remembering the oath and law necessarily makes you a better person. If you remember the oath and law and you try to live by that, you will necessarily be a better person. I think the, the number one experience was, off to my left here is the Pacific Ocean. And viewing the Pacific Ocean for the first time was it. I'd been in the Atlantic Ocean, but I knew this is, was going to be warmer and much more inviting. So the view from up here when there was nothing here was just right down to the beach and I couldn't wait to get down to the beach. That was the big memory I have.